All right, in this video, I want to talk about permutations, uh, which this is in, you know, basically this is a special case of the multiplication rule where you have selection without replacement, right? So it's very similar, um, or actually it is the multiplication rule. So similar to the multiplication rule, uh, but now we have selection without replacement where selection occurs without replacement. So every um, permutation, you could just use the multiplication rule and you'd be good to go. Um, but there is a nice helpful formula for permutations. Um, we have, this is the notation for it. So for a permutation, we uh, use this little subscript N which is, the, this is like the total number of objects, and then K, this is like the number of objects that you're selecting, okay? Um, and I will show an example of how to use this formula, but basically this is the formula, okay? So this formula, it'll make more sense um, in, in an example. So let's go ahead and go to an example where we can see this formula in action. So suppose um, we have a box that contains a blue, red, green, and yellow ball. So we have, let's see, um, a blue, red, green, and yellow ball. Okay, two balls are randomly selected from this box without replacement. This is very important, without replacement. That means that you go in and you select a ball, suppose it's the yellow ball, and the yellow ball comes out, then um, when you for part two of, of the experiment, right, when you are selecting the second ball, that yellow ball is no longer in there. You do not put it back, right? Rather, you just stick your hand in again, and now there's only three balls left. And so suppose like the green one comes out, and now there's only two balls left, right? So this is basically two parts, part one, part two, okay? Find the number of events in the sample space. Right, so during part one of this experiment, you could have gotten the blue ball, you could have gotten the red ball, the green, or the yellow, right? If you had the blue ball, you could only get the red, green, or yellow for part two of the experiment. Because you can't get the blue ball again when you don't use replacement, right? If you got the red ball, you could get the blue, the green, or the yellow for the second part. But you can't get the red again because you don't put the red back. All right, if you got the green ball, then you could get the blue, so the red, or the yellow. And if you got the yellow ball, you could get the blue, red, or green. All right, so I could list out every element in my sample space using this tree diagram. So the first one, I'd have blue, then red, then blue, then green, blue, then yellow, and red, right, the way I'm reading it, red, then blue, red, then green, right? And I could just continue listing them all until I get to the final one, which is yellow and green, okay? Uh, they're not asking me to list out the sample space though. They just wanna know how many elements are in the sample space or how many events are in the sample space, right? So this is an event, this is another event, this is another event, right? How many total events are there? Well, using the multiplication rule and using this tree diagram, I can see, well, there are one, two, three, four options in part one. And in part two, there's three options, right? So that leads me to 12. There are 12 total possible events in the sample space. So 12 events in S. All right, done, right? Except I didn't use that, that handy dandy formula. And K, so could I have used this formula to make this problem shorter? Absolutely, right? So to make this problem shorter, I would just have to notice that, okay, I have sampling without replacement, Another important thing to notice is that um, getting a blue ball and a red ball and then getting a red ball and then a blue ball, those are two different events, right? So 
order here matters, right? Which one you get first, I'm saying matters because you're sampling without replacement. And you know, you could think of this problem um, either you could either count like this to be the same event as this, or you could count them to be two different events. And for this scenario, I'm counting them to be two different events. So if you recognize that you're doing that uh, and you have sampling uh, without replacement, then you are good to go using this formula. How would we use it? We'd say, okay, well, there are four total balls. So n is four. We are selecting two of them. So k is two. So I would have four comma, oops, comma two. So four factorial, four minus two factorial. Okay, so what is factorial, right? You multiply four times three times two times one. You multiply uh, the first integer by every previous integer, okay? Until you get to one. Four minus two is two, right? So I'd have two factorial on the bottom. Two factorial is the same thing as um, two times one. Okay, so you notice that this cancels with this, and you're left with four times three, which is 12. So you can see how that formula is kind of a shortcut, so you don't have to go and draw out your, your, um, your tree diagram. You go straight into what the answer is. Right, let's do one more example. Suppose you have a quilting club that has 10 members. Every year, the members are randomly selected to be president, secretary, and treasurer. How many different ways can these positions be filled? All right, so because one person cannot serve both as president and secretary, so that's, that's an important thing that you're assuming here, same person can't be more than one position, that is selection without replacement, okay? Also, if you have, say, for example, Mary and um, Jane, right, and Mary is the president and Jane is the secretary, that's different then Mary being the secretary and Jane being the president, right? So order of these positions matters, okay? So once you recognize you're in that position, you can go ahead and use your permutation formula. You have a permutation. So uh, what is the formula, okay, and how do we use it? So n, n is our total number of um, you know, elements that we're selecting from. In this case, we have 10 members. How many positions need to be filled? That's what K is. One, two, three, right? President, secretary, and treasurer. So we have 10 comma three. 10 factorial divided by 10 minus three factorial. Okay, so then how do we solve this? We have 10 factorial divided by seven factorial. All right, so 10 times nine times eight times seven. Now I can write times six times three or times five, etc. Or I could just stop and say, okay, well, basically seven factorial is gonna be back here, right? And then I have seven factorial. So you're always gonna have some sort of cancellation, right? And your answer here is going to be what? Uh, 10 times nine times eight, right? 10 times nine is 90. 90 times eight is 720. If you ever end up with a fraction or a decimal or something that's not a whole number and you're doing permutation formula, you know you've made a mistake. Okay, so there's 720 total, you should always have a whole number, total um, number of ways that the president, secretary, and treasurer can be selected selected uh, from the 10 members.